Hello everybody, my name is James, I'm from the Consensus Lab and Lotus teams here at Protocol Labs. Today we're going to be running through a live online demo of the Interplanetary Consensus Quick Start Zero to Subnet Guide. Now this guide is also available online in written format so you can copy and paste all the commands we run today. Please check out the links in the description I have posted below this video. As you can see from my screen, I will be performing all the steps we run today on a system running Ubuntu 20.04. If you're running a different Linux distribution, please check out the direct links to the full documentation where we feature installation steps for many different types of Linux distribution. As you can see from my screen, the live terminal will be featured on the left hand side and I list all of the commands that I'll be running for every section in the screen on the right hand side. Let's get started, and we'll begin by preparing our system for SpaceNet and IPC installation. We'll start by simply running a sudo apt update, and let that run through. And as you can see on the screen on the right, we have a rather long list of dependencies, so I'm going to copy and paste those in. Hit enter. Now mine went through fairly quickly, as I've installed these packages before. Yours may take a little longer, but once it's finished, we are finished with installing our dependencies. Let's move on to the Go and Rust installation. So with all dependency installation complete, we can now move on to installing Rust and Go. As you can see, as a reminder, on the right hand side of the screen, I have listed all the commands that I'll be running in this section. I'm going to be copy and pasting most of these commands and remember you can do exactly the same by following the, the link to the online written version of this guide listed in the description below this video. Let's start by installing Rust. And the first command we're going to run is the curl and it's going to give me three options. I'm going to select one, press enter and that's done. As the output suggests we then need to support to source the new path so that the rust up command is available in the current terminal and we're going to finish by adding the bottom two target like so and that is the rust installation complete and we can verify that by simply running rust up hyphen capital V that will output the version that the rust up we just installed verifying that the installation was successful so now let's move on to installing go very important point before we get started, if you have already installed Go on your system, you have a previous version on there, you must completely uninstall it before installing the new version or the build will fail. And we can do that by simply running a sudo rm on the user local Go directory. We are then going to curl and extract version 19.7 of Go with the following command. And we're done. Again, we then need to make sure we add the new Go path to the environment. We'll source our profile again to make sure it's available in the current terminal. And we can verify su successful information uh, installation by simply typing Go followed by version. And that confirms that we have successfully installed Go version 1.19.7. In this section, we're going to be installing Docker Engine. And we'll start by adding the Docker package repository. First command I'm going to run is sudo install. Nice and simple. We're then going to curl the GPG keys by running this command. And then make sure the permissions of those keys are set correctly. We'll then add the entries to our sources list, like so. We'll then use app to download and install. That will take a few seconds. And we're done. And we'll finish by adding our user to the Docker group. And with that, Docker Engine is successfully installed. So, with the system preparations completed, we can now move on to building the IPC stack. 
I'm going to start by creating and entering a new IPC directory. And then I'm going to clone the IPC agent from the consensus shipyard repo using the following command. And that has completed. I'm now going to enter the new IPC agent directory, issue a make build, and then a make install infra command. Now this command will take a little time to run, but I'm going to leave it running so you can see the entire output. The build has completed successfully, so we can now move on to installing SpaceNet, which is the IPC enabled testnet. To do this, we are going to install Udico, and this installation may be familiar to current Lotus users as Udico is a direct branch from Lotus. I'm going to start by cloning the SpaceNet 
Lotus get her burrito. And then I'll cd into the new Lotus directory and issue the make space net command. Again, this will take a little while to run, but I will leave it so that you see the output in full.
So that rather long process has now completed um, and the IPC stack build is now complete. We can now move on to deploying our Spacenet node. As you can see from my screen, I am already in the IPC directory that we created earlier. I'll launch the new Utico instance by issuing the following command. Now this command differs slightly from the written guide, which uses NoHup. For your own installation, we do recommend either using NoHup or Screen. I'll start the instance by pressing Enter. And as we can see, our new node has started syncing. I'll now switch over to a blank screen, leaving this one running in the background so we can check on our sync status. Now many of the commands that you've possibly seen in Lotus are also available in Utico, so we can check our Utico sync weight state simply by issuing this command. And there we are. As you can see, the chain is syncing very quickly. In just a few seconds this should be done. I'll leave the output on until we are fully up to speed. And there we are, we are now fully synced. The next step is to get configuration parameters for the IPC agent. Again, I will switch over to a blank screen to leave this command running in the background. We first need to create an admin level authorization token, which we can do by issuing this command. And make sure to make a note of that command as you'll need it in just a couple of moments. The next step is to create a new Utico wallet, which we will do with Utico wallet new. And again, make a note of that new wallet address for the next couple of steps. So we now have our authorization token and our new wallet address. We can now initialize our IPC agent with the following command. And as the output says, we now have a new config toml file which has been generated in the .ipc agent directory. We now need to edit that file using nano, using the following command, and we will replace all of the text in this file with the text that you can see on the right hand side of the screen, and remember that all of these texts and commands are available in the written guide. I'll now replace the authorization token placeholder with the authorization token that we created just a few moments ago. And then I'll move on to doing exactly the same with the wallet underscore zero placeholder and I'll replace that with the wallet address that we created just a few moments ago. And there we are. So everything is in place. So we can exit Nano and return to our terminal screen. We can now start our IPC agent using the following command. Again, this differs very slightly from the written guide, which uses NoHub. And as we can see, the IPC agent node is now listening at port 3030. We'll leave our IPC agent running and we now need to fund the wallet that we just created and to do that we will go to the Spacenet Consensus Ninja website which is the Spacenet faucet. I will input the wallet address that we've just created, press get fill and in a few seconds we should receive a message telling us that the funds have been successfully transferred. There we are, our funds are on the way. 
we can now close our faucet screen. I'll leave the agent running in that window, return to a blank window, and I'll check the funds have been received by issuing a Udico wallet list command. And there we are, we can see our new address has been funded with 10 fill. Leaving both our SpaceNet node and IPC agent running in the background, we can now move on to the next section. In this next section, we're going to be focusing on creating our first subnet and validators. We'll be creating our validator first under the root path by using the following command. And as we can see from the output, we have a successful message telling us that the subnet has been created with ID root at T01006. We need to make a note of the new ID for use in the next step. We'll now move on to creating and exporting our new validator wallets. In order to create our wallets, we'll issue this command. And we'll do that two more times. As we can see from the output on screen, we've created three wallets. And we need to take note of those wallet addresses for the next step. We now need to ex export each wallet, which we'll do with the following command. And we need to replace the wallet placeholders with each of the wallets that we have just created. So again, we'll need to run this command three times. start with wallet 1 we want to wallet 2 and finally wallet 3 done. We also now need to fund each of these wallets and again we'll have to do this for each wallet so we'll be running this command three times. We'll use this command and again substitute our wallet placeholders. First of all wallet one followed by wallet 2 as you can see we're sending two fill to each wallet that is funded by our default wallet which is the wallet we funded on the faucet page and finally wallet 3 And there we are. So we've now created our subnet and we've created our validator wallets. We'll now move on to the next section. We can now move on to deploying our new infrastructure and we'll start by deploying our new subnet nodes. 
this is an example command that we will be running and it should be noted that each node should be importing a different wallet key for their valid data and we'll be using the three wallet keys we created in the last section. Now each of these nodes will also be exposing different ports. If you have a busy system these ports may already be in use so the commands that I'm pasting now will include those ports. If those ports are already in use on your system please choose different ones. We'll start by importing wallet key 1 which you can see on the screen and you'll notice that I have added the ID that we also took a note of earlier. You may recall it was T01006 and you can see it there following the ports in this command. The wallet key 1 is the first wallet that we created in the last section. We'll press enter We're waiting for the final output which will confirm that this node is fully up and running. And there we are. The output is telling us that our subnet is running in container and the ID. Now we need to take a note of all of the details that we are seeing on this screen for use in the next steps. And we'll need to do that three times for each of our wallet keys. So I'm going to copy all this information here and I'll save that in a text file. We can then move on to our second node. As you can see the idea is the same but we are now using different ports and we are now using wallet key 2. The initial output is the same and again we are looking for the confirmation message at the end which we will copy and save. And there we are, the second subnet has now been installed and is up and running. Again we will copy all of that information and save it for the next few steps. And finally, number three with wallet key three. And once again we have a success message and again we will copy all of this information for use in the next steps. Our infrastructure is now deployed and we can move on to the next section. In this section we'll be concentrating on configuring our IPC agent and we'll be using the details that we have just saved in the previous section. For ease of use, we're going to import the remaining keys into the first validator. Now the IPC agent will act on behalf of all. We'll start with this command and you'll note that I have taken the friendly name of the first validator container that we deployed in the previous step which is IPC underscore root underscore T01006 underscore 1251 and you'll also note at the start of the command that we are specifying wallet key 2. We we'll press enter and we have a success message. We'll now do the same with the third key. Again I'm using the friendly name of the container, the validator container 1251 
and this time we have got the wallet key 3 and again we are given a success message we'll now edit the config toml by using our nano command like so and we'll append the data on the right hand side of the screen to the end of this document we'll be replacing some of the placeholders with the information that we saved in the previous section so that information is pasted in the first thing we will do is add our ID which was T01006 We'll then move down to the authorization token. We'll delete the placeholder. And we'll add the authorization token that we received when we successfully installed our first container validator. That token is as follows. We then need to add all three of our wallet addresses. Here we have wallet one. Wallet two. finally wallet 3. Now all of those placeholders have been filled in so we can save that, exit back to our terminal and our final step is to reload our config which we can do with this command and we have received a success message. We have now configured our IPC agent and we can move on to the next So all of our subnet infrastructure is now deployed and we can now join our validators to the subnet. For this we need to send a join command from each of our validators, from their validator wallet addresses, also providing the validator's multi-address. All of the information we require for this section we've already put to one side in the deploy infrastructure step. We'll start with validator1. And as you can see, we have some placeholders to fill in. So we'll start with our wallet one address. We'll then move on to our subnet ID, which is root. And you may recall T0106. And then we need to input our validator multi address. Now this is in the subnet validator info section in the information that was output in the deploy infrastructure section. We'll copy that in. And press enter. This will take just a couple of seconds. And there we have our success message that our first validator has been joined to our subnet. We'll now move on to our second validator, again replacing the placeholders as we go. Firstly, our second wallet address. We use the same subnet ID. Finally, our second validator multi address. And there we have our second success message. And finally, our third validator. And 
and we're going to do the same steps this time using our information for the third validator information. We have what is address. subnet ID and finally our validator 3 multi address and there we are all three validators have now been joined to our subnet So in our final section for today, we can start validating. And we'll do so by issuing the following command three times, and again we'll be using the data that we put to one side from the deploy infrastructure section. As you can see, we have some placeholders to fill in again. So we'll re remove the placeholder, and we'll replace that with the friendly name of our first validator container. We'll start that off and there we go. So we'll keep that running in the background, move over to the second validator, and again we'll paste the second command, fill in the placeholder container name, which for the second validator is as follows. Validator 2 is now up and running. We'll move over to the third validator. same way we'll paste in the friendly name of validator number three press enter and there we have it all three validators now up and running we can also now check that the subnet is running by issuing the following command which is already on the screen there press enter and as we can see IPC agent root T01006 status 1 everything is looking good so throughout today's video we now have our SpaceNet Utico instance running we have our IPC agent running we have our validator 1 validator 2 validator 3 and we've confirmed that the subnet is up and running Thank you for tuning in today. You can reach out to us at any time on the IPC Help channel in Farcoin Slack. And please remember to subscribe to the IPC Announcement channel to stay up to speed with all things Interplanetary Consensus. You can learn more about Interplanetary Consensus and Consensus Lab on our YouTube and Twitter channels and our websites consensuslab.world and IPC Space. We look forward to seeing you all really soon.